Dye here. If you don't know Eric Dye, uh, we're going to get introduced to him. But I am interacting with him all the time. I love what he does. We're going to be talking about audio engineering. But Eric, tell us a little bit about what you do online. What do I do online? Well, um, I'm the editor of Church Mag. I uh, take care of a premium WordPress theme. Uh, can be found at LiveTheme.tv. It's a great vid live video WordPress theme. Um, and then I'm also editor for a um, blog at FindingJustice.org, and that that looks at um, yeah, missions and trafficking and a lot of kind of the the issues that as Christians we we should have close to our hearts. So that's a quick rundown of everything I do online. I like to think that you are a connoisseur of all things tech, geek, and blogging related. I yes, I, I do that too. Yes. So um, one, the reason that we have you on is because we do the Church Mag podcast together, and it was one of those things where I like the idea of doing a podcast because it's a different medium. And I am okay with reading stuff, but I just heard recently somewhere that you retain more information by hearing and seeing stuff than you do by reading it. I think that I learn auditorily. So the idea that we can present something in a new medium is fascinating to me, and I love the fact that we do the podcast. But when we do the podcast, it's three guys talking, and I really feel like that's all it is. We come up with a topic sometimes hours beforehand, and then we just sit there and talk hours. about it. Hours. I wish it was hours. Sometimes <laughs> it's minutes. Sometimes we wing it. That's fine, and I, I get that. But what happens after that is magic to me because I know how to do audio stuff. I know how to do video stuff, but what you do is you take three guys talking and make it into something that's actually really entertaining and something that's really consumable by people. And so I want to know what got you, first of all, what got you into audio engineering, as you call it? Well, what got me into audio engineering when I was 18 years old, a long time ago, Boy, and I shouldn't say some numbers because then people might be able to do the math and figure out how old I am. A long time um, ago in a galaxy far away. A long time ago in a galaxy <laughs> far, far away before I started college. Um, I went on a, a tour of a radio station and I was talking to the, the talk shows because I, I kind of I listened to a lot of talk radio when I was uh, in my teen years and uh, really enjoyed it. Fell asleep listening to it every night kind of a thing. And... Uh, they said that they were looking for, that they would take on some intern. And I was like, hey, I should do that. That'd be kind of cool. And uh, so I started as an intern and worked my way up to making photocopies and um, those kind of things. And uh, after a few years of, of working there, I worked my way up. And uh, after over 15 years later, here I am today still doing still doing audio although it's not for um, uh, a little AM radio station or uh, six years ago I not six years ago four years ago I, I um, left uh, the Jay Secchio live radio program that I produced and so you know I had a lot of years of, of experience in radio uh, both live as well as you know production so yeah that's kind of how it all started. Very cool. Well, I think for me, one of the biggest implications in all of this is there's a lot of audio stuff out there, whether it's YouTube videos that have the video with it or just podcasts. And it's something that I would actually encourage people to invest in, especially with churches or blogs, whatnot. And so my question is, how do you create the magic? How do you go from three guys talking on your podcast to something that's enjoyable to listen to? What are... What are some tips that you have or some tools that you use in the process? Well, I think, you know, I mean, some of it is probably some of it's experience just having been around it for a long time and dealing with it and don't really think about it. It just kind of is what it is. Um, uh, the, the few years that I was in, that I've been here in Italy, obviously not working in radio, um, I've been producing another podcast, the Finding Justice podcast. Uh, so I began to kind of explore the podcast area and the podcast scene and comparing it to radio and how it's different uh, and how it's similar. Um, but as far as 
the magic. Um, I think that, Jeremy, that's what, what it looks like or seems like when you don't know how it's done. <laughs> um, but basically, I mean, it's knowing how to cut and not being afraid to cut. I think that a lot of times um, I learned um, that I could create like a montage. I remember, I remember editing, creating this montage to open up one of the radio programs. And it was like two minutes long. It had all these sound bites, and it was very dramatic and, and all this kind of stuff. And I was really proud of it. And every, every bit, every sound bite was so, I thought it was so intricate and important to what the montage was trying to say. And, um, but then it occurred to me, I'm like, but it's too long. It's too long, you know? And so I edited it down to a minute. I cut it in half and I was so much happier with it. And I had to make a lot of sacrifices to cut it down in time. I had to get rid of what I thought was important, that sort of thing. And so I began to do that kind of regularly. And I kind of take that approach a little bit to the podcast, not being afraid to, to cut things out or get rid of things. Um, even the last couple of podcasts, for example, um, usually all three of us share a favorite post from around the web, and mine has been absent because as I edited it, a couple things happened. Number one, the podcast seemed too long, so I axed it. Okay, so you're not getting the director's cut. You don't want the director's cut because it would be boring. Okay. Uh, and another reason why I cut it out is because my story sucked. It was boring, you know, so I got rid of it. Um, and uh, another thing I do is try to clean up audio as best I can, you know, get out, get rid of some of the extra uhs, the long pauses, maybe tighten up the breaths, you know. You can gain a couple of minutes on an entire podcast just by going in and cleaning it up. But, I mean, those are, those are a couple of things that I just naturally do when I dive into to editing a podcast. Well, and can I add two things that I've seen behind the scenes whenever we've been on it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely. So, now, this, so, is your, this is your show, man, or whatever it is. Yeah, but it's your secret sauce that I'm kind of, at least from my vantage point, showing. So I think for me, two things that I've seen that you do is, one, you weren't wanting to really do this unless it was entertaining, like it had value to it. And it's not this entertaining for the sake of entertaining, but the fact that um, you have this um, sense of by yourself, this product that you want to get out that you would enjoy listening to if you did it. And I think that for me, that has been inspiring to, to not only be professional in what you do, but at the same time to enjoy it, to actually have that camaraderie because there's something a little bit more exciting about having that whenever you're actually doing it. So the laugh track at the end to have all the mistakes that we have said or the silly little stories that are totally inappropriate, but if we can take out the context of it and just say some stupid little quibs at the end, for me that's enjoyable. And then also on the other end of it to have the production value of like the audio. So we had talked about what would be a good intro song or what would be a good name for something like this that the fact that it wasn't just something that you took two seconds to figure out, that you actually had a painstaking effort to try to figure out, and you came, we came up with, like, what, six or seven different names, and then we called it something as simple as the Church Mag Podcast, but it's not like we just named it that. We actually had some effort into putting out what could this be called, what could be the audio in it, how are we going to make it, so there's like that little 8-bit feel, but it's not just an 8-bit gamer feel. There's more to it than that. So you actually put a ton of effort into the creative side of all of this. That for me is inspirational because it's the foundation of why you are putting it together like this. It's not just something to have as a resource. I mean, I'm sitting here talking a really long time, and I'm realizing, is this entertaining? And I want it to be entertaining, and I think that was something you cued me in on. Yeah, I mean... Um... I totally agree, and you're right. And if you recall, our first podcast, there was no... I hadn't quite figured out what the format was or what mm -hmm. order things would go. So the first podcast we did was not in the order that you hear it today with the interview, you know, kind of in the middle to break, break things up. Um, and that was just part of the process of kind of figuring out and reinventing the podcast. And, you know, um, uh, my wife and I, we listened to a number of different podcasts to kind of get a get a better feel, and she would remind me sometimes, like, you know, you're thinking too much radio, 
you know, stop thinking <laughs> quite so much radio. I'm like, oh, yeah, you're right. If you remember when we first did a few podcasts, and would be like, I don't even keep identifying the podcast. These people clicked on it. They know what they're listening to. You know, they're not yeah. scanning the podcast dial, you know. Um, so, you know, that kind of stuff went on. And um, you're right about the music. And uh, some of that also had to do with um, uh, budget. You know, uh, we couldn't get, you know, we couldn't pay for the licensing and song. And, and so, you know, we went on a hunt, uh, that kind of thing. So, you know, you work within in, in the confines that you have, but just because you have a limit doesn't mean it, it can't be any good. And um, mm-hmm. uh, I, think, I think you're right. And um, as far as the creative process goes, you know, you can talk about creativity, whether it's, you know, writing or video or audio, or whatever it may be, and the process is very similar with all those things. We, we let a lot of things just kind of stew and brew, you know, for, for several weeks before everything was said and done. So I think that that's important, too, is to just, you know, don't decide that, you know, we have to figure this out right now. And like you said, we came up with all kinds of goofy names for the podcast, but it was just part of the part of the exploratory process, you know, so. Yeah, and you, and you also seem to hold the, the ring loosely, so I, I appreciate that from my standpoint of being able to participate in it and to be able to enjoy the process of it all. So the dreaded well, question. Because yeah, my, my ideas by themselves are really bad. They really are. And if, you if, I, that, can, but if I can say discuss that, it with people... Have, of what you come out with, and so I think that negates your humbleness right now. <laughs> so my question for you in all of this is, what is um, the one thing, it's the dreaded question, what is one thing that you want to be able to show people online that you are doing? Do you have anything to share with us that, that you can let yes. people see you're doing? I'm going to share what people can't see me doing, and that is... I lost a domain name because my register had made a mistake, and it wasn't entirely their fault. It was partially my fault um, because I, I canceled it, and then I undid my cancel. I apparently, you can't do undos. There's no control Z with domain names, and so I figured out that somebody had purchased it. So I contacted them, and he's like, um, "Do you know?" how I purchased it? He's asking me how you purchased it because this guy must buy lots of domain names. And he said, well, I can sell it back to you for a good price because it's got a really good, you know, uh, rating through Google and everything. Of course, I'm thinking, well, yeah, because it was mine. I did that, you know? And uh, he's like, you know, if you give me a reasonable price. But through that creative process, like we mentioned before, I came up with, um, <laughs> I, my wife and I came up with a better domain name uh, than what that was. So I was like, oh, I'll give you 20 bucks. He never replied, so I think I offended him. So, so what's the new domain for people that are looking for? Well, it just forwards to my personal domain. So okay. it's you know something that I might would want to use in the, in the future. So the yeah. domain name that I have now to replace it is Diecasting It. Mm. Diecasting It. Yeah. Diecasting.it. Which just forwards to Eric Dye.it. Yeah. Nothing fancy, but very cool, very cool. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, and so I'd love to hear what you guys have to say as far as podcasting. Are you? Is this something you're wanting to explore? Are there questions that you have that maybe I can forward to Eric and get answered? Um, I personally still see it as magic. I know that I'm even in the process of creating the content. Eric, you do an awesome job with the podcast, the, the website, Church Mag. So I appreciate what you have with all that. Thanks, man. All right. Talk to you guys next week.